When this girl was 14 years old, she used to be a pastor. But when she gained admission in school, she started looking like this and then living like this. But today, she has now given her life to Christ and she's now an evangelist. Hi, my name is Deborah Ikedi. I used to be a fraudster. But now I've given my life to Christ and, and I'm now an evangelist. Deborah, I can't believe you're the one in that video. Yes. That was wow. Me. And you at the age of 14 were a pastor. Yes, I was. Tell me, how did you move from being a child of God to smoking, drinking and living this kind of life? Okay. I get admission at the age of 16 into Abusal University. I did, the, I did my ministry for four years. When I was in 100 level, 200 level, I was faithful. But at that time, my godfather that was helping me go through school, he lost his job. So the third year, I had to start hustling by myself to pay my school fees and help myself and my family. Yeah, uh, so who introduced you to living that kind of life? Yeah, some friends actually did in school. You say you were once a fraudster? Yes. When I graduated from school 2018, I didn't even wait to take my, my results. I traveled out of the country. I traveled to Senegal. I went to hustle at Dakar. I stayed there for about a year. I made some millions. I left there to Togo. From Togo, in Togo, I made um, $150,000, but... Wow, that's a lot of money. Yeah, but my, the, my chairman there, he actually gave my information to the wrong people. They duped us, actually. So... I didn't get to see that money. So I traveled from there to Ghana. I was even almost used in Ghana for money. I, like, I went through a lot. I, to, wait, wait, I don't understand. You were almost used for what? For money in Ghana. Ritual? Yes. How? Um, I went to meet a friend there, not knowing that he was into some fetish things. When I got there, I wasn't, he wasn't really the person I used to know. Um, he actually said he was helping me. Then there was this oil. He put the oil on my forehead because when I came, it was like, Debra, why did you enter the street without um, using any fetish stuff and all? Because then I. What do you mean by enter the street? Like, enter street, like, traveled out of the country, like, started for a uh, fraud without going to native doctor. Okay, he was asking, like, why would you go into fraud without doing something fetish? Uh, yes. I told him, ah. I'm just doing this because of money. I still know that I will work for God. I don't need any money that will not that will give me problems and I cannot disobey God. So I told him I, I don't want to do anything fetish. Can you tell me about your journey? Like how did you move from being that decent child of God to smoking and getting addicted to Yes, it all started in school. It all started in school when I was in three hundred level. I actually I met with one guy. The guy I was begging him to teach me fraud, actually. So he started teaching me with phone, and the guy was a smoker. So from there, one night, he was like, try this thing. I actually did. So that was when I started learning local. I made about $2 million from that local we were doing. BVM, actually. What was local? Local, local fraud, like scamming your fellow Nigerians. Can you tell me about the technique? Yeah, um, it's actually BVM. We will scratch. There is a... Um, there's an app we use, we scratch your BVN and we'll call you, we'll get your, your, your personal information and we'll call you and f act like we are the manage, management of your bank. How would you get this information? How would you get this BVN? Yeah, there's a bank, we, there's, a, there's an app we use. We just um, put any numbers. Any phone number? Any phone number, we just put any phone number, then it will bring out your BVN and your personal information. Then we will call your phone number and act like the manage, manager of the bank and tell you that uh, something is wrong with your account that you should send us your your personal details. When you send like your password, yeah, your password. When we send, when you send it, we will remove the money from the account. Wow, oh, you made like two million naira from this. Yes, the, but there was something that happened to me. I scammed the pastor, the woman, and the woman cost me. She said her name was actually Deborah too, Pastor Deborah. She said nothing I would do in this life that would. That, that will prosper. So I had to save that woman's number. All the countries I went to, I saved her number. I didn't throw that number away. It was actually my friend in Ghana that helped me pay that money. I had to transfer the woman's money back because what she said was actually happening. Well, it was actually happening rather. Everything that. What did you steal from her? Just. Is it, was it up to 100,000 then? <laughs> it was not up to 100,000. <laughs> it was not going up to 100,000. So after sending the money back to the woman, I had to call her. I've sent your money. And pray for me. She, she didn't even pray. She only said sin. And that was it. But my mind was... 
you said what? Sin. S E E N. Like she's seen the money. She didn't pray. I was like, okay, I've sent your money and I just removed my mind from her. She didn't forgive you. I don't know if she did because she didn't say. Yeah, wow. So, um, tell me, what was your biggest achievement when you were living a life of crime? Um, I did a lot. I did a lot. I could make my mom happy. Like, I could get a house for her. I helped some of my siblings, actually. I, I was okay. Like, I wasn't begging. And I could, yes, financially I was okay. And I helped my friends and all. So there, there's something I didn't see actually. When I left, um, I was going through depression in Togo. After I lost that $150,000, I had to come back to Nigeria because I was facing sleep paralysis, anxiety disorder, and, um, and um, uh, depression. So I wasn't normal anymore. I wasn't normal. I was acting like an insane person so my best friend in lagos had to tell me to come to lagos so i came to lagos i i sing actually coming to lagos i had to start my my singing again and i started uh, can i hear your song yes you can okay so this is your song I'm trying to foresee, I'm trying to look for myself I stopped having feelings, I replaced it I lost my love to the streets, I lost my life to the streets People made me realize, they're good heart for you and your family alone I was humiliated, miscalculated, mistreated But the sun kept shining, cause God never sleeps Thank you, love, for lessons. Thank you for the ups and downs. Promise you'll take and thin and back. Deborah, I am so. I mean, I don't know, but this is my opinion. I think the song is really nice. What do you think about the song? I mean, these are the kinds of you know, I, it's something I just realized is that the devil is using poverty to kidnap people into his kingdom. I mean, from being a very decent girl at the age of 14, 15, 16, something bad happened. She lost her sponsor in school, and all of a sudden, things began to go different way for her and the only way to survive was to look into crime and then i don't know like i mean look at this beautiful soul you can imagine look at the song everything is is making sense so i'm just here wondering i mean didn't you have friends that were advising you like good friends 
yeah i had but at that time it was too late because my my focus was already on making money to help my mom because my mom was really going through a lot my dad is actually a king but he got married to his second wife abandoned us so we've been suffering like ever since i had brain and started thinking like a mature person i have never seen my mom like smile that genuine smile so i just wanted to change the story and nobody was helping then i was even going from churches to churches to sing to nobody was supporting but when i entered the street at least i was making i was making some money so tell me you used to go to from church to church to sing yes i do i was going for from different to different churches to minister and they didn't appreciate you some of them don't appreciate at all some of them even get jealous i want to even bring me down a lot what's the highest achievement you had while you were going from church to church to sing I can't man I can't say I can't say I just think then I had I had a, a music crew called Sam's Voices so, so it, maybe the highest money we've gotten then was maybe 5000 or 10000 in an envelope wow so what's the lowest pastor's gift nothing I mean, this is well. The truth is that every pastor has his own challenge. Every church has his own challenge. Most of these churches are facing like their development stages. But I think that if you look at some of the people that are doing so many bad things today, they want you to be dedicated to the things of God. You know, there's this thing lacking. Like, you see, everybody the way we do evangelism these days, everybody just like using tracts. These tracts are very boring. There's a way you can actually reach into the heart of somebody. You know, like if you can give somebody an opportunity to truly express themselves, because most of these people are talented and the devil knows that they are talented. And that is why he goes for most of those people. Now, how can, what are you currently doing with your life at this moment now? Um, I came, I came, my turning point was um, actually October 4th. I was, this year, this year, I was perceiving deaths around me. And I see, I have the gift of revelation. Um, somebody came to me in my dream when I was in Lagos and told me that I have I don't have more time that I should go and do what I was sent for so I was I was feeling the spirit of death around me so there was a time one pastor pastor Abraham he is the, the name of his ministry is pastor o, um, um, Abraham Oare ministries on Facebook so he chatted me one day and said you have the call of God upon your life then I was angry with the call I just said I know I didn't want to hear more so when I started having that feeling, I had to chat him up and say, Sir, you said I have the call of God upon my life. Talk to me about it more. So he talked to me about it. I've, I've wasted time and he's seen my lifespan short. And I told him... So he's confirming what somebody else already told you? He told me in my dream. I said, yes, I know. He already told me in my dream. And I said, yes, that I must run back to God because I don't know who I am. I'm a destined child. God wants to really use me for... Uh, his work and I said okay they now told me that he will not pray for me he wants me to come to Edo State first but I don't know what actually happened he changed his mind he prayed for me that night he, he, he delivered me a lot of things happened that I don't really want to say a lot of things that was my turning point that was my turning point then a um, few days after I had to come to Edo State so now I'm just doing evangelism sometimes with his car and his equipment so I, I'm, for now I'm not doing anything. I'm only doing evangelism. So how is your life right now, this moment? Um, I'm happy, though I don't have anything. But I'm happy. The what do you mean by you don't have anything? Like I'm, f I'm very down right now. I'm at the lowest point of my life right now. I've never been this low in my life. But there's this peace I feel that even when I had millions, I wasn't feeling that peace. But now, I, I can't even boast of a thousand. But I have thousand era yes but i have peace there is this peace that i just have that i don't even bother to to complain or ask anybody for anything because i just have this peace in christ and i know at the right time he's going to provide it amen so i don't know because it gives me joy to see somebody who used to live a certain kind of life a life of crime and the person is now is now repenting you know he's, he's not like this girl is like she's willing to give her life to god she wants to travel the world and inspire people you know with her life with the message of god i really don't know how we can support your ministry because i think that you need to experience this love you need to you need to know that people actually care do you understand me you probably have used your life you've done a lot of bad things and um 
those kind these kinds of things has its consequences you are likely to face them but then there are people who actually care and um i don't know but i think that if you're watching this video and you're compassionate i think she needs to receive a certain kind of love especially towards her ministry and what she wants to do if you think you can invite her to come and speak to come and use her life story to inspire people in your program in your church in your school do not hesitate to reach out to her i'm going to leave her contacts and her bank details in the comment section let's see how we can actually support her to get her life back in place and um i just want to see you become successful in what god has called you to do i hope you will not see anything that will discourage you from this no no ah uh, this is my this is my turning point this is actually my turning point because i it was as if god has been waiting for me i can boast of a lot of souls just this few months now i can boast of a lot of youths that have given their life to christ due to my life and uh, videos i make you make videos yeah i make videos what's your name on social media my name on um, instagram is rich d yeah and my name on um facebook is evangelist evangelist deborah youtube tiktok i'm not on youtube my name on tiktok is minister deborah okay um well um i really don't know what else to ask you i don't know what else to say i think at this point we have to tell the viewers bye so um don't worry i pray that god is going to be compassionate towards you do not be scared do not be afraid that anything bad is going to happen to you i pray that god is going to give you that grace to live a long life and now that you've decided to make your life useful and available to him he's going to protect you at all costs and um, even though you've done a lot of bad things may the consequences do not be too harsh on you that you regret this decision i pray that you find love you find happiness in what you are doing i pray that your success in achieving this call god has given to you will never be far from you this journey of life is never going to be difficult for those that want to support you that everything is going to work out well for you so let's tell the viewers bye bye bye